Hey everybody, Ed here with the Digital Digest, and today I wanted to share yet another update on my experience with the Samsung Galaxy Note 10.1 2014 edition. Now, I've been fairly aggressive with my updates regarding this tablet because, quite frankly, it's one of the best pieces of hardware and software under one roof that I've ever seen. Of course, you are paying a steep premium for that experience, but in my opinion, as you may have noticed through the course of my coverage, I don't think it's that bad considering you're getting a tablet that in many ways makes every other tablet on the market look like it's from another generation in terms of features and overall performance. Now that aside, today's video is more about customization and uh, the heart of Android than just what the Note 10.1 2014 edition offers out of the box. So as you may have noticed, this isn't the TouchWiz standard UI out of the box, and that's because I've installed Nova Launcher, which is something that I mentioned uh, in the past. It's one of the most popular uh, la uh, launcher replacement applications that you can purchase, and for good reason. It gives you a very stock look and feel, uh, but keep in mind it is just a launcher or a skin, so underneath Nova, you do still have the TouchWiz environment at play. Uh, arguably one of the best features, in my opinion, is still the notification bar, so I'm glad to still see that. In fact, it's something I wish more manufacturers had a, an eye for detail when it comes to that sort of uh, ease of use because it really does provide quick access to just about everything you need. Uh, but otherwise, everything here looks very stock, what you'd expect out of almost a Nexus experience, uh, and that's what's great and very popular about Nova. But one of the important things about installing a launcher replacement like Nova here on the uh, brand new Note 2014 is that you don't give up or sacrifice any of Samsung's built-in uh, great software features like multi-window, which you can see is right here and still works just as it does under traditional TouchWiz. And I have to remind you, TouchWiz is still here in the background, but overall the performance with this uh, launcher really is extraordinarily smooth and I think most people would argue it outperforms what you're going to find with traditional uh, TouchWiz running. Now that's not to say that it blows it away. Certain tasks still just aren't optimized for this tablet. Uh, whether it's uh, the magazine application which as you can see is now dis uh, disabled because I'm swiping up, but because we're not running TouchWiz as our launcher, it's not activated. That's something I think some people will be very happy about. But a lot of the finer details that really make the Note experience the flagship and best in the business, in my opinion, for many users, especially multitaskers and professionals looking to do far more productivity-oriented tasks with their tablet, those things are still there, not just uh, multi-window, but of course your S Pen. So if I go ahead and take out the S Pen, you can see immediately Air Command is launched. So if you were curious if you had lost Air Command as a result of installing you know, a launcher replacement, fear not, it's still right there. And we can still use all of the applications just as we did before. So there we have it. I can you know, throw out an internet browser right there. And then if I wanted to go ahead and start multitasking even more, I could pull up the gallery. Now I've got the gallery there in the background. Pull up a video. This, of course, can be floating around, as I already demonstrated. Um, keep that playing. Now you've got that same exact window control that I've shown in the past, which is uh, pretty cool. One thing I've noticed, and that's what's nice about this tablet, by the way, is that you're constantly learning about functionality. Uh, besides cropping, this isn't one of the things that I just recently learned, but that is something you can do within video. Nothing groundbreaking, uh, but certainly another cool little feature. Of course, you can also control sound with gestures. I just brought the audio on inadvertently. If I zoom all the way out, you'll notice volume control with swiping up and down. So this is some of the gesture-based controls. Nothing really new there, but uh, as I've demoed earlier, or in my one of my last videos, you can, you know, basically navigate what you're focusing on and continue to do that. But once you've built up a lot of multitasking applications, which it just bumped me out of there, but I'm going to demonstrate what I'm talking about in a second, show you exactly what I mean, you actually get another multitasking window uh, for all of your multitasking. So if you go ahead and just may not have enough. Oh, there we go. You can see we've got another menu now. So uh, we have uh, switch application, switch window, drag and drop content, 
as well as close the application. So this is yet another menu I just discovered. Uh, and really that's what's very cool about this product is that there's so much thought and uh, development put into this custom software, something you really won't find from any other manufacturer uh, that Samsung has put into it. And for good reason, the Note brand, extraordinarily strong uh, and really, again, unmatched. But this is just taking it to a whole nother level now. This can be found on the Note 3. It's not exclusive to just the 10.1 2014 edition, but that's because they are companion products. They do expect, they being Samsung, that if you own something like uh, the Note 3, you probably want to own this tablet as well because, quite frankly, top-of-the-line experiences that mirror one another almost identically. Only real difference is that uh, the Note 3 has a different processor, otherwise apples to apples here. Uh, but so that I thought was pretty cool. So multitasking within multitasking now, and as I was showing you before, when you do bring up that other menu, you can actually hit that to switch over to whatever you have running. So if I actually had even more going, let's say I brought out, uh, looking at what uh, I could actually use here, S Note. And so now I've dropped S Note in there as well. And let's open up another application. Let's open up Scrapbook. And you can see we're just mounting them. And, and even though we only have two on screen right now, if I go ahead and access that uh, additional menu now, you can see now we're building them up. So yet another task manager beyond the stock task manager that we're all used to uh, getting an Android in order to kill applications in order to free up memory for things that we aren't running traditionally used with the home button like you see right there where we can swipe and just get rid of different applications. Uh, but I thought that was pretty cool. So for those of you wondering if you lose uh, the Samsung uh, extra software as a result of throwing Nova Launcher on here? The answer is absolutely not. So it's a win-win in that regard, and Nova does run more smoothly. As I mentioned before, the only thing where anyone really has reported any lag whatsoever is with Samsung's own magazine-style uh, aggregate for bringing together all of your content, which I think most users won't even necessarily use. Of course, if you do stay true to the TouchWiz environment, then you probably will want to actually use it because it is a pretty application. Uh, but in terms of other things, everything else still remains stock. I mean, when you install something like Nova Launcher, you're not adding anything other than that shell, so everything else will remain the same. So I haven't done anything to remove bloatware here. I have installed some other things um, beyond Sketchbook uh, for Galaxy, which is included. Uh, I've also installed the full version from the Marketplace. Uh, again, Flipboard is something that the lag that is reported on here, which I don't even think is that big of a deal, but it is present, I won't deny it, it's mild though, is something you'll also find on the Note 3, so it's not a hardware issue, it's clearly a software issue, because the processor here, as well as the 800, uh, the Qualcomm Snapdragon 800 found in the Note 3, are top of the line, so it's clearly not a processor issue, but more of an optimization issue, and I expect we'll see that addressed in software uh, down the road. Uh, overall, otherwise, it's just nice to have a stock experience. Again, for those of you not interested in TouchWiz, this is about all that you'll have to see. Uh, of course, if you do dive into settings, that's where TouchWiz still lives. Another thing I want to point out, Wi-Fi performance. Relatively incredible when it comes to the current generation of standard hardware. Yes, most new tablets do have dual band Wi-Fi, but this model in particular as many other tablets will be down the road, does support AC connectivity, which means that I'm pulling over 400 megabits per second, uh, as opposed to uh, the 300 that I was able to get with the Nexus 10. So even faster Wi-Fi speeds promise even less buffering and better support for HD content, yet another great uh, feature set here on the Note 10.1 2014. Uh, in terms of what you'll see in these menus, I did show some of this in the past, nothing crazy here. I mean, they did redesign this for this generation of tablet, uh, meaning the 2014 edition of the Note 10. Uh, so basically now uh, we have Bluetooth, airplane mode, your data usage, location services, more networks, and uh, nearby services, and screen mirroring. Then within the device settings, this is where things begin to get interesting and you really dive into the software and everything that Samsung has to offer, the entire package, and why they really go out of their way or show that they've gone out of their way to create a unique experience. And a lot of this stuff I think many of you won't care about, but there is still a bountiful uh, amount of useful stuff here in my opinion. So 
uh, when it comes to sound, of course, general volume, vibration intensity, your default notification sound, touch sounds, whether you want them or not, uh, the screen lock, haptic feedback, the pen attached sound, uh, attach sound, you know, when you remove it, uh, do you want to actually have a sound or not, your key tap, key tap vibration, audio output, you can switch between stereo and surround, as well as uh, sound adaptation. So you can customize it to your environment. So some cool features there. Then within the, the uh, display, brightness, I mean all the traditional stuff, touch key light duration, your screen timeout, screen mode. Now this is where they actually offer you uh, different display types, dynamic standard movie, or just an adaptive display, which is what I've been sticking with. Uh, you also have the reading mode, which is only going to be optimized in reading-centric applications, e-reading type apps. Uh, but I haven't seen a real uh, true difference in using that as opposed to just leaving it off. And technically, I tend to leave things off that I think could use more battery. I'm not saying that it does, but I didn't see a real difference in use and haven't in past generations either. Uh, screensaver. Your battery percentage, this is something more manufacturers should be including as a possible uh, display value, gladly uh, or happily Samsung does and has been. And then uh, the edit after screen capture. Uh, Multi-window feature, self-explanatory, you can turn it on or off if it bothers you. I know some people might be disturbed by the tab always popping out even though it can be relo uh, relocated. You've then got your lock screen options which are uh, pretty in-depth yet again. I mean giving you a lot of different options Wallpaper also in-depth your font size as well as style which is uh, Just another nice touch and you can actually get additional fonts in the event that you're not pleased with the uh, onboard list your notification panel this can be customized um, You know, let's say you want to move things around you can easy is just a, a long touch and drop Accessibility, yet again, this is pretty much standard fare, but Samsung has some of their own uh, little things that they've added on. Blocking mode, which is something I have turned on right now simply because I don't want any notifications interfering in the course of this video. And that's a feature I happen to appreciate on all of Samsung's uh, Galaxy products. I use it on my Note as well, so uh, that's something if you aren't familiar, uh, familiar with, make yourself familiar with because it's definitely a good thing when you're going to bed at night or just at any moment where you know you do not want to be interrupted for any reason. Let's go over to controls because I'm going to take you through all of what's left of TouchWiz. This way you get that uh, demo as well. Language and input, nothing really of value to show you here. I mean, text-to-speech options. I mean, there's nothing crazy, nothing you haven't seen before when it comes to that. Now, voice control, uh, you can turn this on and it will give you the ability uh, to use uh, your voice for uh, alarm, camera functions, music functions. This is something I personally do not use. It works, but definitely far more on the gimmick side. Uh, Google voice commands generally are all that I will use, but Samsung, again, wants to make the brand their own. I don't blame them. S Pen controls. Again, this is something you're not going to find with another manufacturer because only one other, and that is Toshiba, has a real true digitizer experience and it doesn't really come close at all to what you're getting here from Samsung. Uh, so whether you want to turn the uh, pen detection on or off in order to improve battery life, I haven't really played with that yet, can't tell you the effect. Uh, your uh, actual pointer when you're hovering over the screen, uh, direct pen input, your air view, uh, again the, uh, the air view is what you're seeing right now. Uh, your Air Command, which is that pop-up screen that's going to give you all the options of what you can do with your S Pen actively when it's uh, removed from the slot. Uh, your sound and haptic feedback, pen detachment options, and the actual sound itself, depending on whether or not you want it to make a sound. And in terms of monitors, or excuse me, motions, uh, this is something, again, I've tried but not really a fan of, and this is literally using Tilt and Pan in order to navigate as well as zoom on the tablet. Don't really recommend that. Definitely a gimmick, as is the palm motion. That's another thing I'm not a fan of either. I'm sure there are some users out there that use this and find it to be a great feature rather than a gimmick. I'm just not one of them. Lastly, Smart Screen, which sounds really intriguing because it offers uh, Smart Stay, which is found on, uh, obviously, other Galaxy products, which will detect your uh, eyes gazing at the screen and keep the screen on rather than letting it uh, adhere to whatever limit you've sent it, uh, set it on 
to uh, disable the screen when there is no activity. Uh, smart rotation, another thing, again, using uh, your face in order to determine whether you want to see in landscape or portrait. Uh, smart uh, pause will pause video that you're watching if it detects that your eyes are no longer looking. And then finally, smart scroll, which offers the ability to literally navigate up and down web pages by tracking your eye movement, or really it's your head movement. Uh, I find all of these relatively useless. I'll be uh, very clear about that. These are the true gimmicks of this product. If they worked for me, I would tell you, but quite frankly, other than Smart Stay, these others are not anything worth wasting your time on. If they work for you, though, let me know. Maybe there's just something wrong uh, in terms of what I'm doing. But uh, for me, these are the gimmicks that are truly just that. I don't think I left anything out there. Uh, one final thing I want to point out because I only went through controls. On the general side of things, yes, boring, the mundane. This is really what you'd see on every Android tablet, just adhering to the touch with skin. But what is cool, uh, and unfortunately blocked out, are the developer options. And one area that I've heard about people complaining about lag, um, I want to address, and that can be done in a small tweak in the developer options. Now, stock out of the box, you will not see developer options. Keep that in mind. You will actually need to go into About Device, and then scroll, or not scroll, I should say, to the build number. Now, as you notice, when I hit build number, it says developer mode has already been turned on. And that's because I've already done it. But out of the box, developer options will not be there. What you will have to do is actually tap this seven times. And it will tell you each time you tap it, even though it's not, how many more times you must tap it before you unlock it. Once you've unlocked it, you will then get developer options. And as you can see, it can be turned on or off. And I don't recommend this for everyone because, uh, quite frankly, the more you play around in here, uh, the worse your experience generally could become if you don't know what you're doing. But for today's purpose, what I'm showing you here, uh, it's you know fairly straightforward and usually, for the most part, will only benefit those of you who do what I'm showing you. So in here you see we've got a lot of options um, that many of you may understand, some may not, but the important thing is the actual drawing because this is where things get intensive. If any lag is really going to come up, this is where it's going to come from. So as you notice, we've got things like window animation scale, transition animation scale, animator duration scale. Uh, I've left some of these on, some of them are off. Specifically, transition animation scale, I've turned that animation off. And I mentioned this in one of my comments that uh, if you turn off uh, animations, or excuse me, I mentioned this in one of my videos, not comments, that uh, turning off animations can improve stability a little bit, eliminate some of that extra lag. So that was another thing I wanted to point out. So the one in particular to focus on is that transition animation scale. Uh, I wouldn't really play with the others. I mean, if you really want to, you can. That's if you find lag is really a problem, but overall, so far, I haven't seen an issue with that. Of course, you can then play with forcing the GPU to get involved in rendering, but I don't recommend that either uh, unless you absolutely need to. Again, this is getting more to the technical side, not trying to confuse anyone, but really those animations are those things that many people would uh, deem unnecessary that are more about the visual than the performance, and they do, in effect, actually take away slightly from your overall performance. So that's why I'm pointing it out. So that's the way you unlock developer options. Again, you want to go into About Device. Seven times you must touch the build number, and then it will unlock your developer options. And this is important, trust me, down the road, especially if you get the tablet unlocked, you will not be able to live without your developer options. But overall, that pretty much covers everything I wanted to share about the experience with Nova. So, so far, really liking uh, both TouchWiz and Nova. This is really more a matter of personal preference and what you want to work with. Some people hate TouchWiz. That's why I'm showing uh, Nova right now, because it shows that you can still retain uh, I would say for the most part, basically a true Android experience with only the, the at least one nicety, in my opinion, from TouchWiz that I wouldn't cut out if I absolutely was forced to leave one thing there. It would be uh, the notification bar. But otherwise, really like what I'm seeing. Uh, this won't be the last update. I've got more in store because every day I'm learning more about what this tablet can do, which you may have noticed uh, from yet another uh, almost 20 minute video here. If you guys have any questions or comments, please feel free to post them. And of course, as usual, please feel free to subscribe. Later.